Hi everyone, here is the video going over 6.1 Law of Signs Day 1. So Law of Signs is broken up into three days. Day 1 is solving specific triangles, the angle side angle triangles, as well as angle angle side. Day 2 is looking at applications, so word problems. And Day 3 is looking at the dreaded ASS triangle. So let's begin. What is Law of Signs? Law of signs is a method for solving non-right triangles. So with right triangles, we use SOHCAHTOA to solve for angles and for sides. For non-right triangles, there's two methods. One is law of signs and the other is law of cosines. The law of signs triangles are listed on the side over here. We have angle, angle, side, angle, side, angle, and angle, side, side. Now, if you'll notice, the angle side side triangle has a sad face next to it. So why is it sad? Well, first of all, it's sad because it's an ash triangle. Second of all, it's sad because the ASS triangle is the one that is the most challenging to solve for. But that gets its own lesson with Law of Signs Day 3. So, Law of Signs. Law of Signs is a ratio of sine of the angle with its corresponding side on the bottom. So I have sine of A over A. So remember, um, capital letters denote the angles and lowercase letters denote the side. So I have sine of A over side A, sine of B over side B, sine of C over side C. Now you're not going to use all three of these ratios at once. You'll set up two at a time. So for example, you'll set this up and you can use that to cross multiply. Or you can set this up and you can use that to cross multiply. Or you can set this up and use that to cross multiply. The key component with law of signs is that you need to know an angle and its corresponding side to be able to use law of signs. If you do not know an angle and its corresponding side, then it's not a law of signs problem. It is a law of cosines problem. Okay, so here is our first problem. So solve triangle ABC where angle A is 129 degrees, angle C is 31 degrees, and side A is 417. I don't know if you could hear Dexter screaming in the background, but I just gave him a yogurt and now everything is right with the world. So <laughs> let's actually solve this triangle. I'm going to start by drawing a triangle. This is angle A, B, and C. Um, angle A is 129 degrees. Uh, angle C is 31 degrees. And side A is 417. Now keep in mind, when it says to solve the triangle, what you are looking for is you're looking for all of the missing pieces. So for example, I don't know what angle B is, so I'm going to have to find that. I don't know what side C is, so I'm going to have to find that. And I also don't know what side B is, so I'm going to find that. I'm going to start by finding angle B because it is the easiest one to find. Angle B is going to be 180 minus angle A and angle C. So if you recall, the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So what I can do is I can add angle A and angle C. Whoops. So 129 plus 31, and I can take that and subtract it from 180. So I have 180 minus 129 minus the 31. So that gives me angle B is 20 degrees. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I want to solve for one of my sides. So what I would recommend doing is finding that corresponding side with its corresponding angle. So the corresponding side and angle pair that you have. So if I look at this, I have angle A and side A, and that is what I'm going to use to be able to set up my ratios. So I have sine of 129 over 417 equals and then I'm going to pick a solve to uh, I'm going to pick a side to solve for. So I could solve for either B or C. I'm going to go ahead and solve for B cuz I like working in alphabetical order. We just found angle B, which is 20 degrees, and I can use that to solve for side B. 
Now in order to solve for b, I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply. So when I cross multiply, that gives me b sine of 129 equals 417 times sine of 20. And then to get my b by itself, I'm going to divide. So sine of 129 dividing by sine of 129 from both sides. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this entire expression into my calculator, but before I do that, I'm going to double check the mode. So I am going to hit mode, and my angles are in degrees, so I'm going to go ahead and adjust it so that it is in degree mode. So I'm going to type this in, so 417 sine of 20 divided by sine of 129. And I'm going to round to the nearest tenth, I guess because it doesn't say, um, but I'm going to round to the nearest tenth, so that is uh, 183.5. Okay, so I have angle B and side B. The last thing I need to do is solve for side C. Now, one thing that you cannot do is you cannot use the Pythagorean theorem. It is tempting when you have two sides of your triangle to use the Pythagorean theorem. However, the Pythagorean theorem only works with right triangles. This is not a right triangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that same initial ratio that we had of sine of A over side A, but this time I'm going to solve for side C instead of B. So I'm just repeating the process, but with a different angle. So sine of 31 over side C. Just like with side B, I'm going to cross multiply, and then I will shove the expression in my calculator. So I have C sine of 129 equals 417 times sine of 31, divide by sine of 20, 129, And I'm going to put that expression into the calculator. So 417 sine of 31 divided by sine of 129 gives me approximately 276.4. All right, and now my triangle is solved because I solved for all of my angles, got my angle B, got my side B, got my side C. So mission accomplished. All right, let's do another one. So I have angle A is 62 degrees, 12 minutes. So this right here is a different notation for angle measurements. Um, degrees, minutes, and seconds is another way to write out decimal degrees. Um, but it's 62 degrees, 12 minutes, and angle B is 33 degrees, 30 minutes, and side C is 9. So again, I'm going to go ahead and start by drawing out just a generic triangle. It really doesn't matter where you put your A's, B's, and C's for the sake of solving. Um, I just put them wherever I want, and I always just tell myself that it's not drawn to scale. Um, so angle A is 62 degrees, 12 minutes. Angle B is 33 degrees and 30 minutes. And side C is 9. So what I am missing is I am missing angle C, side A, and side B. I'm going to go ahead and solve for that third angle first because that is the easiest one to do. So I have angle C, I'm going to do 180 degrees minus the sum of my two other angles. So 62 degrees, 12 minutes, plus the 33 degrees, 30 minutes. Now, as you put this into the calculator, just be careful because you do need the symbols for degrees and minutes. So I'm going to write a note on the side of how to do that. So in order to get the degree and minute symbol, so you are going to hit second, and then it's your apps button. And if you look right above apps, it says angle, and we're working with angles, so that's how you can remember um, that you're going to hit that button to be able to find your degrees and minutes. So I'm going to do 180 minus, I'm going to type it in exactly how it looks in the calculator, so I'm going to do 62, and then I'm going to hit second apps to get my degree symbol, 12 minutes, second apps to get my minute symbol, uh, plus my 33 degrees, second apps for degrees, 30 minutes, second apps, four minutes. And that gives me 
3 when I plugged it into the calculator. So 84.3 degrees. However, since my original angles were in a different type of unit, it was in degrees, minutes, and seconds, I want to actually convert this to degrees, minutes, and seconds. So in order to do that, what you're going to do is you are going to hit second apps again. And you are going to select number four, where it says uh, there's a little triangle, little triangle, and it says DMS. That converts your angles from decimal degrees to degrees, minutes, and seconds. And that gives me 84 degrees and 18 minutes. So your units do have to coincide. So if I have degrees and minutes to start, I need to have degrees and minutes in the end. Okay, so now I have angle C. So from here, I need to figure out which angle side correspondence I have. So I now know that angle C is 84 degrees and 18 minutes. So if I look at my triangle, I have angle C and side C, and that's what I'm going to use as my ratio. So I have sine of 84 degrees, 18 minutes, over nine equals sine of, and I'm gonna go ahead and solve for A, because I like to work in alphabetical order, 62 degrees, 12 minutes, over side A. I'm actually gonna set up my other ratio as well, so I'm gonna use that same sine of 84 degrees 18 minutes over 9 but on my other side I'm going to set it up with side B so I have sine of 33 degrees 30 minutes over side B I'm gonna go ahead and work through that cross multiplication so I have a sine of 84 degrees 18 minutes equals 9 sine of 62 degrees, 12 minutes. Hopefully you'll notice when I do the, the cross multiplying, I put my number in front of my sign. That's just um, a good habit to establish. And then from here, I'm gonna divide. So sine of 84 degrees, 18 minutes. Whoops. Sine of 84 degrees, 18 minutes. And let's plug that in. So I have 9 sine of 62 degrees. Don't forget to hit second apps to get your degree symbol, second apps to get your minute symbol, divided by sine of 84 degrees, 18 minutes. And that gives me 8. It says 8.000788. I'm just going to round it to 8. Why not? And then for side B, I'm going to do the same thing. Cross multiply. So I have B sine of 84 degrees, 18 minutes, equals 9 sine of 33 degrees, 30 minutes. And we divide. Divide. And we plug it in. So I have 9 sine of 33 degrees, 30 minutes. 33 degrees, 30 minutes. Divided by sine of 84 degrees, 18 minutes. And that gives us 4.99, which I'm going to go ahead and round to 5. And now we have solved our triangle. Mission accomplished. Got our last angle and our other two sides. Okay. So the last thing we're going to look at with this particular lesson for Law of Sines is finding the area of a triangle. So this applies to having side angle side triangles. So that is when you know two sides and the angle in between. So when you have that information, you're going to use this formula over here. Now keep in mind, this formula specifically has B and C with angle A. Now all of these values are interchangeable. So what I mean is I could also have A and B with angle C, or I could have, what's my other combination? A and C with angle B. Okay, so it's one half 
um, the product of your two sides times the sine of the angle in between. So find the area of the triangle where A is 22 point, or not 22, 2.2 2 centimeters, B is 3 centimeters, and angle C is 37 centimeters. So in order to use this formula, I have to have an angle and, uh, or I have to have two sides in the angle in between. So I'm just going to double check really quick that that is the scenario that I have. So angle C is 37 degrees, side A is 2.2 centimeters, and side B, which is across from angle B, is 3.0 centimeters. So if I look at what I have, I have two sides and the angle in between, which means I can go ahead and use this formula. Now, if you did not have that scenario of two sides and the angle in between, um, we would have to go about finding the area a different way, um, which I'm not necessarily going to talk about right now. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and use this formula. So I have area equals one half um, the product of my two sides, so 2.2 2 times 3 times sine of my angle. And we plug that in. So 0.5 times 2.2 .2 times 3 times sine of 37. And that gives us 1.9859. I'm going to go ahead and just round that to a nice 2. And then my units for this, since we have um, centimeters for area, that would be centimeters squared. I guess we could have rounded to the nearest tenth. No, that would push it to two. If we rounded to the second decimal place, you would have 1.99 centimeters squared. But you know, two works as well. All right, so that concludes the lesson for Law of Signs Day 1.